All right, let's transition back to the wide receivers here. I got a name for you, okay? There's been everybody holding out from OTAs. Cortland Sutton, Brandon Ayuk. Brandon, Ayuk, I was heard, I was told this. You want to hear a crazy number? I was told Brandon Ayuk's asking for $35 million a year. $35 million a year. That is That's a insane. wild number. That's a wild number. I'll give you a more realistic option. You want to talk about guys holding out from OTAs. Juwan Jennings over in San Francisco, not showing up. He's on a one-year deal or was on a one-year deal, is on a one-year deal, I believe, mm -hmm. this season with the 49ers, set to make like four point some million dollars. Don't get me wrong. Juwan Jennings, you look up his stat book, it's tough. It's not really good. He had five touchdowns his rookie season. Hasn't really done a ton during the regular season since. Great playoff performer. I think he's worth more than $4.7 million or four point five or whatever it is. I look at him and say, cheap option. Cheap contract, if you could extend him for two to three years. And I think a guy that's got more potential than he has in San Francisco, because quite frankly, it's got to be tough to come up with receptions with Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey. You could talk about the wide receivers. Oh, he's got to overcome those two. Let's not act like Christian McCaffrey isn't a wide receiver one on 31 out of 32 teams in the NFL. That The only one that he's not is probably not two because Justin Jefferson's wide receiver one. There's 30 out of 32 teams. Christian McCaffrey is is your wide receiver one and your running back one. So got to be tough. I think you could go out and get a guy like Juwan Jennings, make an easy trade. Fourth round pick, send him to Pittsburgh. You'll give him, I don't know, a three-year deal worth, let's say, six million bucks a year. That's great. That's as cheap as it gets in the NFL when it comes to wide receivers. And I think you're banking on potential. And if people are in on John Mechie, if people are in on you know guys like that, uh, Brandon Ayuk is still a guy on the rise. What's wrong with John Jennings? What's wrong with taking a shot on a guy that I think has way more potential than he's shown and definitely took a step up in the play in the playoffs last year, which is something the Steelers would need. And I don't know if he's a wide receiver too, but I think he's got the potential to be a pretty good wide receiver too in Pittsburgh. John Jennings, what you think? I think the thing that I, I look at now, and especially now that we're through the draft and we're through the majority of free agency and you see what options are left out there and you see where everybody stands with their organization, who's holding out, who's not. I think the idea of needing a wide receiver two specifically has kind of fallen off the side for me. I think when I yeah. look at it, I say, you just, as I said earlier, you just need more talent yes. and let Arthur Smith scheme some of these guys open because you have George Pickens, uber talented. You have some really talented running backs. You might be able to use Pat Fryermuth and kind of unlock some of his potential more. You have mm -hmm. Roman Wilson who has some potential there. You just need somebody that's a little bit more talented than Van Jefferson to be in yep. that position. Somebody that you can scheme open in certain instances. Somebody that has actually been able to find success in a good offensive scheme. And Jawan Jennings has. Now, again, his numbers, not Terrible. fantastic. But again, when he comes to Pittsburgh, is he going to be the fifth option behind four stars? No, he might be the fifth option behind four decently talented players that are all going to get the ball. It's not mandatory that you get the ball to all of these guys. We've seen that in the past. So, you know, I don't hate him as an option. I think he's one of the better options now simply because it's more realistic. Yes. Uh, but I think once you get out of the, they need a bona fide number two versus they just need to elevate the level of talent that they have. A guy like Jawan Jennings does make a lot of sense. I agree. I, I agree. I think that's where the Steelers are. I, for Again, realistic is the key word here. If you're looking for realistic, the Pittsburgh Steelers just need a wide receiver, an outlook that is real about saving the season, because potentially that's what it comes down to. Like if you go into the season right now, and I said this to somebody yesterday watching practice, if you go into the season today with this wide receiver core, you're not winning a Super Bowl. You're not. You're going to struggle way more. People are going to be real upset. They're going to start blaming everybody else. Russ is in deep waters already. Arthur Smith's offense looks bad. Like the wide receiver core is that bad. If you could add, it's just about adding anybody. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter what position they play outside, inside. Just get wide receivers that are better than the wide receivers that you have already. And I think Juwan Jennings does that. Like, I think you could, Who? Uh, what's the stat line? It's like 270 yards and a touchdown last season. Something terrible. You look at him, I think he's got more potential than that. Yeah, last season he had 19 receptions for 265 yards and a touchdown, but he also had 111 yards in three playoff games. So it's it's yeah. weird. It's whenever you use him, he's useful. They just didn't use him a lot during the regular season. I think that's I I, I think that's that's exactly where it is. Is is you just you need a guy who has potential. The Steelers don't have guys because that's their thing. Is is you could bank on 
you know, Pat Fryman, you could bank on Calvin Austin. Those are real, like you're banking on guys with actual potential here, actual upside. Van Jefferson gave you all the upside. Quez Watkins gives you all the upside. Scotty Miller has peaked. These guys are already, you know what you're getting. Juwan Jennings, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get in the better things. Uh, I, I think Juwan, and again, like it's not about finding a number two, just like you said. It's just about finding somebody. It's about adding talent. And honestly, if you want to add two of them, if Juwan Jennings isn't enough, if that's how you look at it and you say, nah, you know, not good enough, go add somebody else too. Like, what's the difference? If you go into the season and you got John Mechie and Juwan Jennings on your roster, it is a billion times better than what they have right now. And right, you know, that's just, you need potential. You need upside. You don't have any of that if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think Juwan Jennings makes makes sense. Again, he's not Brandon Ayuk, but... He's much more affordable than Brandon Ayuk. He's much more affordable than Cortland Sutton. He's much more affordable than Debo Samuel. He's just, it, it, that's that's where you have to look, is is if Brandon Ayuk's asking for $35 million, nobody's trading for him. You know, Cortland Sutton's not getting traded for 20 plus million dollars a year. That's just not happening. Debo Samuel's already 28 years old. You're not trading for Debo Samuel. Why not trade for a guy who's worth six million bucks and say, screw it? Who cares? <laughs> like, you know, let's see if it works. If it doesn't, who cares? We gave nothing up, gave nothing up for him. And you signed him for six million bucks. Uh, Burks. Burks is another one. Traylon Burks. You know, that's a guy you want to add Traylon Burks. Cost nothing at all. Cool. It's got potential. It's got upside. You need potential and upside. Right now, you got a bunch of vets who don't have that left in their game. And uh, it's it's very concerning. It's very concerning for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, we're two days in. We got a a long road to go, but that is by far the most glaring yikes on this team two days in. The rest of the team looks good. You know, Troy Fautano was talking about, I had a rough first two days of practice. You didn't notice. You don't know why? Because all eyes were on Van Jefferson dropping footballs and, you know, Quez Watkins not looking. I mean, he looks tall, but hasn't really impressed. Scotty Miller, I haven't even seen out there. So that's where you are if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers.